Fire and emergency services converged on 42nd Street after a metal power box exploded beneath the tracks, trapping passengers in three different trains. It appears that the, the cable which runs into a metal box had a failure. There was a loud pop, uh, a bright flash. Sometimes you can get a short circuit in heavy electric. It'll form like an explosion. It'll sound like an explosion. Some terrified passengers had to spend more than two hours underground. Police and firefighters had to walk them through the train, then onto the track, up a ladder to the platform itself. How do you feel? Not too good at Let's get him in the ambulance. 400 passengers had to be evacuated. When it was over, EMS reported nine people suffered smoke inhalation, including five New York City transit cops who were in the tunnel at the time. I couldn't see anything. There was smoke everywhere. You couldn't see anything going through. But the most serious injuries happened on the way to the fire. Nine city cops were injured when their van overturned on 28th Street after colliding with a car. Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly and Mayor Dinkins paid a visit to the injured at Bellevue. Meanwhile, commuters say they were comforted by two reverends and a transit worker who were passengers on the ill-fated trains. Are you going back to work? Yeah. <laughs> after all of this? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Firefighters say with the Trade Center bombing in the back of everyone's mind, the city got off easy this time. Just another tough day in a tough town. In Manhattan, I'm Rosemary Gomez for the Channel 11 News at 10. And as you can imagine, subway service through Times Square was thrown into turmoil for a good part of the day. For commuters, it added up to long waits and a lot of confusion. Frank Uciardo has that part of the story. It was well after the rush hour and frantic commuters were still on the phone, many calling work, others their home, all saying they were running late. It's going to make me just a little bit late where I usually catch the B train here. I now have to walk because to take the IRT is going to put me out of my way at the present moment. I missed the 10 to 11 o'clock appointment. I was on a train for an hour between Canal Street and West 4th Street, stuck on the train. It was very scary and very... Uh, claustrophobic. There was a lot of confusion during the morning rush hour as all the trains that normally run on 8th Avenue were being rerouted over to 6th Avenue and passengers complained they couldn't understand the directions as to where to find the trains. There are delays at all services. A is an apple, B is a problem. A is an apple is delayed, but it is sitting here. Clearly that's not the problem. It's not working at all. I mean, I have to go to several people. Nobody knows what's going on. E is a problem. I can't understand whether the B or the C are coming. This is insane, really? Is this what this woman is talking about incomprehensibly? I'm gonna pay double fare, jump out, and go get a bus. Some 50,000 daily commuters rely on the A, C, E, and number seven trains to get to work, and by the time the evening rush hour rolled around, full service was restored, but not the rider's confidence. Well, I hope nothing happens right now is what I'm hoping, and I can get home safely. As somebody can always be uh, seriously hurt down here, and uh, you always have to uh, be careful. In Manhattan, Frank Uciardo, Channel 11, News at 10. In Florida today, the two white men convicted of dousing a black tourist with gasoline and then setting him on fire were sentenced to life in prison. Mark Kohut and Charles Rourke received additional time for charges of kidnapping and robbery. They were convicted last month of the abduction and attempted murder of New York stockbroker Christopher Wilson, who suffered burns over 40% of his body. Wilson said he's pleased with the judge's decision. The lawyers for the defendants say they'll appeal. Time out on the standoff at Brooklyn's PS 156, where angry parents took over the school in protest. They're leaving for the weekend after taking their fight out of the classroom and into the courtroom. Jason Carroll has a story. <laughs> Parents and children from PS156 came out cheering, celebrating a small victory, the end to a five-day standoff. They're going home tonight armed with the letter from the city saying they can come back on Monday and be allowed back inside. People that have been staying here for the week, at least they can get to go home this weekend. I rest. Feel it and proud and happy because all the parents gathered together and help us to get our school back. We did our job and now we got our paycheck. Five days ago, you'll remember, parents took over the school after becoming upset over their children being shuttled between different schools while asbestos cleanup took place at PS 156. Earlier in the week, the parents rejecting the school board's offer to send the children to alternative schools instead decided to hold out at PS 156 until November 1st when PS 12 is ready to take them in. So the volunteer teachers instructed students on the asbestos-free first floor and Parents and some students slept on benches at night. But now the parents will meet the local board in court on Monday, 
where the board will have to show cause as to why the parents can't stay until PS12 is ready. The judge said, this is a situation that can't wait that demands the immediate attention of the court. You have every confidence that Monday things are going to go your way. Every confidence. I'm very happy. For me and everybody, everybody, at least we accomplished something. And while the parents of the children finally get to go home this evening, their battle is far from over. Tomorrow morning, they're going to be hitting the streets, handing out petitions, calling for the resignations of nearly all of the local school board members. Jason Carroll, Channel 11, News at 10. Coming up in the news at 10, Mayor Dinkins gets a big endorsement from a New York City newspaper today, but once again dashes hopes for a debate with Giuliani. Some very bad news today about the football player from Long Island who was seriously injured trying to imitate a scene from the movie The Program. And actor Sean Connery speaks out for the first time today about rumors that he is suffering from throat cancer. And we have Mr. G in the Weather Center now with an early look at the weekend. G, going to be a nice one. Looks real, real good. Sun-filled weekend both Saturday and Sunday. Outdoor plans go right to it. The five-day forecast, all that after this. For every week, there is a weekend. For every mortgage payment, there is a house you call home. For every diaper you change, there's a baby's smile. And for every trip to the dry cleaners, the in-laws, or the pediatrician, there is now the 850 sports wagon from Volvo. Mayor Dinkins gets an endorsement from a major newspaper which says he'll be a no-show for scheduled live TV debate with Rudolph Giuliani next Thursday. We get the story now from Barry Cunningham. Oh. Mayor Dinkins, still in a close race for re-election, got a big boost from New York Newsday. The newspaper endorsed Dinkins for re-election and dismissed Republican challenger Rudy Giuliani as Brand X. It's one of those things that um, was expected. They endorsed him last time, they endorsed him this time. By and large, he has some of the same support he had last time, but you don't see the mayor picking up any additional new support. Meanwhile, the mayor is being dogged with more questions about campaign finances. Today, it was a report that Parks Commissioner Betsy Gottbaum helped raise $25,000 in campaign gifts to Dinkins. It would violate the city's conflict of interest code if Commissioner Gottbaum went to anyone and said, give David Dinkins a campaign contribution. Commissioner Gottbaum says she didn't. Uh, I take her at her word. Campaign financing was one of the topics for a two-way debate between the candidates scheduled on WCBS-TV next Thursday. But Mayor Dinkins canceled out because Channel 2 has agreed to Giuliani's ground rules and is not inviting conservative candidate George Marlin to participate. If he can't handle George Marlin, he certainly can't handle being mayor of the city of New York. It is not clear to me that there are a lot of undecided voters out there who will be persuaded by anything David Dinkins says or does in a debate. I don't really think, in short, it's in Dave Dinkins' uh, advantage to debate. Critics of this debating game say there's an easy solution. If the candidates don't respect the voters enough to debate each other, have one debate with Marlin and one without him. It wouldn't be a perfect compromise, critics admit, but at least it would be better than the candidates making their positions known in 30-second TV commercials. At City Hall, Barry Cunningham, Channel 11, News at 10. And word tonight of a big political boost for Rudolph Giuliani, Crane's New York business announced tonight that it's coming out in support of the former federal prosecutor, saying he's, quote, the best chance for the city's future. Jack? A Long Island teenager lies paralyzed tonight almost a week after being hit by a car while imitating that controversial scene in the movie The Program. Today his family talked about the tragedy for the first time. Stephanie Shelton was there. My brother sent something to say to you. Nothing is taking me down. Not even this. I'm going to fight. And doctors at the Jersey Shore Medical Center say Michael Messias is doing just that. Although the 17-year-old Long Island football player remains paralyzed after 10 hours of spinal surgery here Monday. He was hit by a car last Saturday lying in the middle of Bayville Avenue, like the football players in the Disney film The Program, trying to show how tough they are. His odds for a full recovery? Limited. Michael <clears throat> had broken the spine at multiple levels, had dislocated the spine, literally almost separating the upper half of his body from the lower trunk. Disney has cut this scene from the film, but not before several other young men have died or been injured aping it. Michael Syosset High School football coach won't talk about the movie, but he has nothing but praise for the boy he says he loves like a younger brother. He's a leader. He's a loving and caring individual. I have no question that he's an extremely intelligent individual. He is not one who is going to act without thought 
He is giving and sensitive. He is not troublemaker. Doctors say it's far too soon to know how long Michael will have to stay here, but he will be with his teammates tomorrow afternoon in spirit. The entire high school football team, in fact, the entire Syosset football program, will be wearing his number, number 56, on their helmets tomorrow afternoon when they meet Long Beach. In Neptune, Stephanie Shelton, Channel 11 News at 10. Dr. Jack Kevorkian has helped yet another person commit suicide. Kevorkian's lawyers say he helped 72-year-old Marion Frederick take her life last night inside his Michigan apartment. She reportedly suffered from Lou Gehrig's disease. She died after inhaling carbon monoxide. Today's incident marks the 19th time Kevorkian has helped someone take their own life. Actor Sean Connery is getting the word out tonight that he is fine and that those rumors that he had throat cancer are not true. The 63-year-old actor recently underwent six weeks of radiation therapy on his throat and never revealed what was wrong with him. There was speculation that he had throat cancer, but Connery's publicist says Connery suffers from a benign throat condition, not cancer, and that he's doing just fine. When the News at 10 continues, Vince Coleman's in court in Los Angeles, and he enters a plea on charges of throwing an explosive device at some fans. And it's an annual ride of fall. The Big Apple Circus is back in town again, and we'll take you there for all the action coming up. Next time on Cheers. You know, guys, I think it's time Woody learned how to play a little poker. Really? Looks like the guys have found themselves a fish out of water. Why don't you sit down, Woodrow? Take it easy, on me. But will our boy Woody be the one getting hooked? Aces and tens beat eights and threes. I'm sorry, here's one more three, full out. Ah, meet Woody the card shark. Next time on Cheers. No, I'm the only one laughing, but believe me, it's really funny. Tonight at 11, followed by Murphy Brown on Channel 11. <clears throat> Our next speaker's high school class voted her most likely to go places. Instead, she stayed right here in her hometown and became our banker. Well, it's lucky for us, because she's going to help us spruce up the playgrounds in this town. Ellen? Now, uh, maybe she'll just give us the money. <laughs> Not a chance, George. Uh, but I do have some ideas on how we can get the money we need. In the communities where we work and live, we've learned that banking is all about one thing, commitment. Introducing Roy's Reuben. I used to date a guy named Reuben. With corned beef, melted Swiss, sauerkraut, and Thousand Island on toasted rye bread, it's a little bit sour, a little bit sweet. Yeah, that was Reuben. We serve it up hot. Yeah, that was Reuben. But hurry, it'll only stick around a few weeks. Yeah, that was Reuben. Mm. A woman of a kind taste for Rogers. <laughs> Be advised, every Trader Horn Superstore is closed today. Doors locked, so we can restock, retag, and drastically reduce prices on every item we carry. Do not shop today. The time to buy is tomorrow from 9.30 to 9.30 during Trader Horn's biggest one-day sale ever. Get huge savings on every television, VCR, and camcorder. Every piece of audio equipment, every appliance, nothing's held back. Everything's on sale tomorrow only from 9.30 to 9.30 during Trader Horn's biggest one-day sale ever. What would you do with a Motorola pager? Never miss a meeting. What would you do? Mom's at home! Pager. What about you? All right, you got the pager number, right? We're, We're going, going out. out. Cool, this works. What would you do? You could go anywhere, do anything, and still keep in touch with the people you want to keep in touch with. So what are you waiting for? Get the pager. It's affordable, it's portable for Motorola. This portion of the news brought to you by Motorola. President Clinton will be heading for a Moscow summit with Boris Yeltsin in January. Secretary of State Warren Christopher making that announcement and meeting with the Russian president and his prime minister. Christopher conveyed the president's regards and continued his support during the meeting at Yeltsin's country home outside Moscow. In a weak moment, Mr. G said he'd buy Kaidi and me dinner if it was not a nice dinner. weekend. Yes. We remember so that. I thought it was lunch. What? Dinner. Oh, I'm... Um, what? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We had it on course tape meal. No, yesterday no, you said not, this. Let's, we're all on a diet. A we banquet, know that. I, I think it was. <laughs> no banquet, but the gift will be a nice weekend, and that means hopefully uh, I'll get out of this one in good shape. But in the Midtown area as we speak, it's a very pretty night. Dan Higgins with the shot of... Uh, 
the of a ferry. building. What oh. it, oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the ferry. That's what it is. And the numbers in the Midtown area as we speak. It is 51 degrees, humidity 46 percent, winds northwest 9. Today's high was 62. Today's low is 48 degrees. Everybody, this is the weekend for the fall foliage. If you were ever going to sneak peek at the leaves, this is the time Probably to do it. Peeking out here in the Midtown area, that's the deal. Past peak, north and west of the city, about 30 miles away. Everybody, if you can, to the north and west, that's where it's at. Take a look at the map, and you're going to be able to see high pressure just dominating. There's our baby. It stretches all the way back from Chicago, all the way across to the High Plains, and that's ours for Saturday and for Sunday. Watch the jet stream from Canada with love. From the land of the caribou in western Canada, the jet is firing dry, cool Canadian air in. You can see the front offshore. Here comes the sun. You know the song, Here Comes the Sun? Yes. Da, 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 Don't da, da. sing. I won't. <laughs> Anyhow, the deal is going to be the satellite showing again, the clear skies. You can see it moving steadily in our direction following the jet, and as you take a look close above the satellite, you'll be able to again see a good break. The cloud line south, the clear skies all the way back west, and when you watch the radar, there is nothing on radar. We are looking very, very good as we go to the Great Lakes and we head all the way to the coast. And the football forecast for the big game Sunday, it's Buffalo against uh, <laughs> the Jets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got head. East Rutherford, mostly no sunny skies. Temperatures whatsoever. right around 60 degrees. That's how the problem started. Got hit in the head with a football. <laughs> All right. For the rest of tonight, temperatures in the Midtown area will begin to drift downward. Temperatures tonight will probably be in the 40s here in town, 30s north and west. And for the rest of tomorrow, golden sunshine, deep blue skies tomorrow. What a pretty day. Temperatures tomorrow will be near 60 degrees. The five-day forecast goes like this. I really like the weekend mm -hmm. because uh, temperatures around here will probably hover right around 60 degrees for both Saturday and Sunday. Monday and partly sunny skies. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 60s. So look far, good. Looks good. Okay, thank you, Thanks, G. Jerry. And what do you have for us, Jerry, coming well, up? Patrick Ewing tonight had a chance to go up against the NBA's newest building. <laughs> and this is an interesting confrontation. And don't let this highlight of that game throw you off as to what actually happened. There it is. See ya. Sweeping right hand hook, and that's the shot I want to see Sean Bradley. End of October is the deal. Yanks are in series, so who cares? Boris is still calling the shots. Healthcare isn't cheap yet, and the Pontiac Grand Am is only nine hundred ninety-nine dollars down. Two thirty-one a month for thirty-six months with GMAC Smart Buy. Ninety-four Grand Am that comes loaded with features. That's the Team Pontiac deal. A loaded Grand Am, only $9.99 down, $2.31 a month. See your nearest New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Team Pontiac dealer. Do you have a clean driving record? Does your car have safety features like anti-lock brakes or airbags? Thinking of buying a new car? Ooh. If you answered yes to any of these, you could save some real money on auto insurance. Better call an Allstate agent fast. She finished school and moved back home. Will you be close now that she's all grown? Fold your starting to brew. Was she up ahead of you? The remarkable aroma of mountain-grown Folgers. It really does open your eyes. Now you see her in a different way. It's the start of a brand new day. You're pretty good at this. Yes, I do take after you. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Accidents happen. But in Dodge Caravan, much of what happens next is already planned. In a side impact, it's designed to distribute the energy through the door's high-strength steel beams, body infrastructure, even the floor. All cars must have dynamic side impact protection and two standard airbags by 1998. For your sake, we planned ahead. This portion of the news brought to you by Dodge. Former Mets outfielder Vince Coleman pleaded innocent today to a single felony charge stemming from an incident outside Dodger Stadium this past summer. Coleman has been charged with one felony count of unlawful possession of an explosive device. It is roughly the equivalent of a quarter of a stick of dynamite, and he threw it into a crowd of fans last July outside Dodger Stadium, injuring several people, including a little girl. Coleman faces up to three years in prison if he's convicted. He's been released on $5,000 bond and his next court appearance November 5th.
Okay, Jerry, you said Patrick Ewing versus... A seven foot seven, seven Sean Bradley. Although seven. they say that he wow. was only six five in kindergarten. I mean, uh, <laughs> amazing how these things will shoot up. But anyway, let's take a look at how they fared against each other. Ewing against Sean Bradley of the Sixers. Early on, Ewing having his problems, but he had to adjust. And then Bradley with the hook shot here, promising good things to come. Didn't happen. He only got like five points. Then Ewing started to zero in on what he should do, using his speed and then this big stuff down the lane. Ooh. And then he lets him take the jumper. No, Sean, he makes those shots. Nicks up behind seven at the half. Second half, it's Ewing with a monster stuff. Bradley fouls him. Anthony showed some signs. Jumper here. They want more of that and more of these passes to Mason. Nicks win at 82, 79. The World Series. I've been hooked on it since I was a kid. When I was 10 years old, I convinced two kids who sat next to me in school to play hooky to go to the World Series. Oh. We didn't tell anybody. Nine o'clock in the morning, instead of going to school, we went to Yankee Stadium. Then we said, look, it's going to look uh, suspicious because we sit together, so we have three different excuses. You have a disease, <laughs> I have a bad thumb, death in the family. We saw the game, great. We got back to school next day. Teacher says, Burton, where were you yesterday? He says, uh, we all went to the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> With the hand. <laughs> we. Hey, yeah. you want to go to jail? You go. That's when I knew life was going to be tough. <laughs> All right, last night, Cito elected to keep the infield back with one out in the third, bottom of the first inning, and it was a mistake. Hey, play him up close. Kruk hits a ground ball. He would have held a runner at third. Instead, Alomar feels it. They let the runner in. Eighth inning, Mulholland is warming up because Schilling is in trouble, but Schilling showed, showed me some stuff. Two men on with one out. Here he is against Devon White, who's guessing fastball, gives him a slider. Still guessing fastball, gives him a slider, two strikes. Another slider to Devon White, and he's gone. And now he has to deal with Alomar. You see Devon White had to go for that, even though it was a little bit outside. Alomar is one of the great clutch hitters. Now he's guessing fastball, gets a slider. Figures, okay, he's throwing a lot of sliders. Gives him a fastball on the outside corner. Finally gives him a changeup. What a piece of pitching this is. A ground ball a second, throw him out. Five nothing, I mean a five hit shutout. I knew that I was about out of gas. I knew I had to pitch my way through the last two innings, and luckily they swung at some pitches that we wanted to swing at. And there couldn't be a worse feeling than last night. I mean, so we just said it. How tough will it be going to Toronto and playing sudden death? I didn't know we had sudden death. <laughs> I guess if you're gonna die, it might as well be sudden. <laughs> Game six tomorrow night in Toronto at 8-12. Stewart goes for Toronto, Mulholland for the Phillies. In Tampa Bay tonight, the miserable Rangers got even worse, this time against the Lightning. First period, McDougal to Anderson, good fake to the backhand. And then Nemchinov is skating around like he's with the uh, ice capades. He passes it out <laughs> to Wells over the cold, and boom, he shoots it in. 3-1, third period. Rangers on a power play, but Gratton slams it home for a shorthanded goal. The final is 4-1. Flyers beat the Islanders 4-3. Lindros had two goals. That's a story, including my World Series memory. Very touching. Do you have any pictures? <laughs> we don't want to see them. Thank you, Jerry. He's still a nice man. Finally tonight, what would the Big, big Apple be without a circus? Don't answer that. Yes, the fun has just begun under the tent at Lincoln Center. The Big Apple Circus is in town, and hundreds of children turn up to see it. They're uh, celebrating their 16th season this year with an all-new theme called Carnival in Venice. And they're going to be around for the holiday season until January 9th. Okay. That's Channel 11 News. It is Friday. It is Friday. Sure is. I'm Kaidi Tong. I'm Jack Hafferty. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. Join us again on Monday for the news at 10. Cheers is next. Good night. Have a good weekend. Yes. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> I feel the page for that. <laughs>